You're on a plane bound for a snowy Los Angeles mountain resort. Excitement brewing for your ski adventure. Suddenly, the aircraft lurches, hurtling towards the icy peaks below. With a deafening crash, you find yourself stranded atop the mountain amidst a relentless blizzard. This is the survivor story of Norman Olstad, but this is just one of the four plane crashes where a survivor story defied the odds. From being stranded in the dense depths of the Peruvian rainforest to clinging desperately to plane wreckage adrift in the vast ocean, these stories stand as a testament to the indomitable human spirit. Number four, Norman Olstad. In the tumultuous world of fifth or sixth grade, where worries often revolve around math tests and crushes, Norman Olstad Jr. faced a challenge far beyond the ordinary. High atop the unforgiving 8,600-foot mountain, he found himself in a harrowing struggle for survival, the chilling winds of fate howling around him. This story isn't just about survival. It's about a boy's journey through an unimaginable ordeal. Norman Olstead Jr.'s upbringing was anything but ordinary. From a young age, he was immersed in his father's world of adrenaline-fueled adventure. His father, a true daredevil, pushed him to the limits, exposing him to the exhilarating thrills of surfing and skiing from the moment he could walk. Despite Norman's initial reluctance, his father's unwavering determination and insistence on pushing boundaries instilled in him a resilience that would prove invaluable in the face of adversity. These experiences, however, will have prepared him to survive an otherwise fatal plane crash. On a cold February day in 1979, the small Cessna aircraft, battling harsh winter conditions, tragically failed to clear the San Gabriel Mountains and crashed into the unforgiving icy landscape. The impact was catastrophic, initially claiming the lives of the pilot and Norman's father. Amidst the mangled wreckage scattered across the snow-covered mountain, Norman, then just 11 years old, found himself in a dire situation with survival seemingly beyond reach. Stranded high on the mountain with his father's girlfriend, Sandra, who was severely injured, Norman was thrust into a role no child should ever face. His prior experiences with his father, surfing tumultuous waves and skiing steep challenging slopes, suddenly transformed from adventurous pastimes into vital survival skills. Despite a broken hand and the shock of the traumatic event, he managed to muster an incredible presence of mind. As Norman and Sandra began their descent, her severe injuries slowed them down significantly. Despite Norman's efforts to assist her, the difficult terrain and her deteriorating condition made progress nearly impossible. Facing a critical decision, Norman chose to continue alone to seek help a choice fraught with emotional turmoil, as Sandra was not only his father's companion, but a mother figure to him. With temperatures plummeting and their situation growing more desperate by the minute, Norman's decisions became a matter of life and death. He recalled his father's lessons on navigating snowy terrains and used his skiing knowledge to aid their descent. Each step was perilous, sliding and stumbling through icy conditions. His descent was grueling and fraught with peril, crossing icy patches that threatened to send them sliding into oblivion navigating through dense fog and enduring the psychological torment of isolation and fear. After nine harrowing hours, he finally reached a ranch house where he could seek help. Sadly, by the time help arrived for Sandra, it was already too late for her. The ordeal left Norman forever changed. Physically battered and emotionally scarred, he eventually found solace and healing in sharing his story. His book, Crazy for the Storm, which not only serves as a memoir of survival, but also as a tribute to his father, whose teachings inadvertently prepared him for the toughest challenge of his life. Norman's narrative continues to inspire those who hear it, a testament to the enduring strength of the human spirit when faced with unimaginable adversity. Number three, Ruben Vanessao. You are nine years old, accompanied by your mother, father, and brother, returning from a safari adventure in South Africa. Memories of cheetahs sprinting across the savanna, lions roaring in the distance, majestic giraffes grazing peacefully, and playful zebras frolicking under the African sun, filling the young boy's mind. Little did he know, amidst the exhilaration of exploration, fate had a different plan in store. This is the riveting saga of a young traveler plunged into the depths of tragedy 
where survival becomes the only beacon of hope in a sea of uncertainty. On May 12, 2010, tragedy befell Afrikia Airways Flight 771, a scheduled international passenger flight bound for Tripoli International Airport. The Airbus A330-202 aircraft, with designation 5 Alpha Oscar November Golf, departed OR Tambo International Airport in Johannesburg, South Africa, carrying 104 passengers and crew. Among them were 93 passengers and 11 crew members. Embarking on what was meant to be a routine journey, the aircraft, with its two General Electric CF680E1A4 engines, had logged approximately 1,600 hours of flying time since its delivery to Afrikia Airways on September 8, 2009. Configured to accommodate 230 passengers across business and economy class, Flight 771 carried mostly Dutch citizens returning from holiday in South Africa. As the journey commenced, little did they know the fateful events that awaited them. As Flight 771 approached its destination, a series of critical errors unfolded. Premature descent, conflicting inputs, and confusion gripped the cockpit as the crew attempted to navigate their approach to Tripoli International Airport. Despite desperate attempts to correct their course, the aircraft tragically crashed approximately 1,200 meters short of the runway. The crash claimed the lives of 103 of the 104 passengers and crew on board, leaving only a single survivor, a nine-year-old Dutch boy. The investigation that followed revealed a chilling series of errors, from inadequate crew resource management to sensory illusions and fatigue, ultimately leading to the devastating outcome of Flight 771. Reuben was discovered unconscious, still strapped into his seat amidst the scattered debris of the air crash. Rescuers located him less than a mile from the runway, where the aircraft had plummeted to the ground. Rushed to the hospital, Reuben underwent a grueling four-hour operation performed by doctors. His injuries included multiple fractures in his lower body and some brain damage. Experts say the survival odds in such a catastrophic crash like this are typically considered slim to none. Reuben's remarkable survival defied these odds, earning his story the label of nothing short of a miracle. The whereabouts of Reuben Van Nassau are currently unknown. It is presumed he and his family have chosen to keep his identity secret due to the gravity of the trauma he suffered. However, on February 3rd, 2020, a show titled Dear Edward premiered, inspired by Reuben Van Nassau's story. This drama follows the life of a boy named Edward, following his involvement in the identical crash experienced by Reuben Van Nassau. Number two. Bahia Bakari. Alone in the middle of the vast Indian Ocean, clinging to debris amidst the relentless waves, a young girl's will to survive was put to the ultimate test. This is the extraordinary tale of Bahia Bakari, the sole survivor of a devastating plane crash. On June 30th, 2009, Yemenia Flight 626 took off from Paris with a final destination in the Comoros Islands carrying 153 souls. Among the passengers was a 12-year-old French schoolgirl named Bahia Bakari, traveling with her mother for their annual summer visit to relatives. A quiet and reflective child, Bahia was not particularly adventurous, making the journey an anxious routine rather than an exciting voyage. This trip was intended as an opportunity for Bahia to strengthen her connections to her family's cultural heritage, but turned into something far worse. Bahia, who was ejected into the cold water, miraculously survived the crash. Finding herself amidst floating wreckage, she managed to grab onto a piece of the airplane's fuselage. Despite her lack of swimming prowess and the physical shock of the cold water, Bahia clung to the debris, drifting alone. Her survival through the night was a defiance of her physical limitations and the harsh elements. Her endurance over those critical hours highlighted not only the raw human instinct to survive, but also the sheer randomness of survival in such disasters. It wasn't until the morning light that a fisherman spotted her, barely conscious but alive, more than nine hours after the crash. After surviving the tragic crash of Yemenia Flight 626 in 2009, which claimed the lives of 152 people, including her mother, Bahia Bakari returned to France to recover and continue her education. Known as the Miracle Girl, 
her remarkable story of survival amid such devastating loss drew widespread media attention and public fascination. She co-authored a book titled Moi Bahia, La Miraculée, or Me Bahia, The Miracle Girl, in 2010, detailing her experiences and recovery process. Beyond her book, Bahia has largely maintained her privacy regarding her personal and professional life. She has made a few public appearances to speak about her ordeal, focusing on her resilience and the emotional aftermath of the crash. The specifics of her further education and career path remain private, reflecting her choice to live away from the public eye while still occasionally sharing her inspiring narrative. Number 1. Julianne Kepke Imagine plummeting two miles from the sky, strapped to an airplane seat and surviving. Julianne Kepke did just that, landing in the heart of the Peruvian Amazon, sparking one of the most extraordinary survival stories ever told. Before we get into Julianne Kepke's story, I would like to remind you to subscribe, like, and comment on something you found interesting about the video. It helps support me as a creator, so I can make more content like this. On Christmas Eve 1971, 17-year-old Julianne Kepke boarded Lanza Flight 508 with her mother bound for Pucallpa, Peru from Lima. A high school graduate, Julianne was returning home to attend her prom and celebrate the holidays. Raised by German zoologist parents in the Amazon, she was no stranger to the rainforest challenges. This background would prove crucial in the unimaginable events that followed. As the flight carried 92 passengers over the dense Amazon jungle, it encountered an intense thunderstorm. Lightning struck the aircraft, causing it to break apart midair Amidst chaos and terror, Julianne found herself free-falling for nearly 10,000 feet, still strapped to her seat. Miraculously, she survived the fall, landing in the thick jungle canopy which cushioned her descent. Waking up alone in the wilderness, Julianne was confronted with a daunting reality. She was injured, without supplies, and lost in the vast Amazon. Relying on her knowledge of the jungle, taught by her parents, she set out for help. Over the next 11 days, she endured harrowing challenges, navigating through dense underbrush, warding off insects, and treating her wounds with limited resources. She found small streams, knowing they would eventually lead to larger rivers, and eventually to people. Her determination and survival skills eventually led her to a lumber camp, where she was rescued. Julianne Kepke's survival story is not just about the incredible odds she overcame, but also about her deep connection to the Amazon jungle that saved her. After her recovery, she pursued a career in biology, specializing in the study of bats, inspired by the environment that both endangered and protected her. Julianne's story, which she has shared in books and documentaries, continues to inspire awe and admiration for her resilience and profound bond with nature. For those interested in learning more about her journey, consider watching the 12-minute documentary that provides an in-depth look at her story, or the video next to it that showcases pilots' last messages before crashing.